Hello, welcome to a new demo on the uh, Nexus Dashboard Fabric Controller Configuration Compliance. This is Karishma Gupta, Technical Marketing Engineer, Cisco. So let's begin this with an intent. What is intent defined in NDFC? It's basically what is expressed in the controller in the form of templates or freeform configuration. And this is basically what the user intends to push to the switch. It's something that must be configured in the switch as per user intention. Configuration compliance or CC functionality ensures that whatever the user intent is, it's present on the switches at all times. If there's any kind of deviation, if this intent is removed or there's a mismatch, then NDFC is going to flag a switch or set of switches and mark it out of sync, which means that now it is not complying with the intent defined by the user. That's what configuration compliance is for. When it's running, it's comparing the intent that is also called as the expected configuration against what's running in the switch cache. That's the running configuration. And it maintains these two databases at all times. Configuration compliance is performed by default every 60 minutes. And there's a server setting to increase this time if the user intends to do so, or this can be user driven. Now, when it's user driven, there are two ways to do it. Either we can use a recalculate and deploy option, or we can use the preview plus deploy, or there's also a resync option. And we'll talk about all these options right now. With recalculate and deploy, it's basically run at a fabric level. That is, it's run for all the switches within the fabric. So of course, this would take a lot longer compared to selectively running it. When you want to do it for a switch or a number of switches in the fabric, we would go to the tabular view of the fabric itself and we can trigger configuration compliance by selecting preview or deploy. In both the cases, configuration compliance is run only for a select number of switches. Now, when we're doing a recalculate config, this is done at a fabric level and it would very quickly mark the switch as in sync or out of sync, depending on whether the intent resides on the switch or it doesn't. If it is uh, out of sync, if the switch is out, marked out of sync, the user will be provided with all the preview configurations. Uh, this is basically the expected configuration that is deviating from the running configuration and the user will be able to preview it and see exactly how it deviates and what will be pushed to the switch. For example, we go into the fabric level and we look at recalculate and deploy. Thereafter, it's going to show us a set of switches. If it's out of sync, it will mark it as out of sync. It'll show the expected configuration, a side-by-side -side div between the running and the expected config. Once it's deployed, we will be able to see the sync status as in sync. This is how we go from an out of sync to in sync status using the recalculate config option. And again, this is done at a fabric level. Now, when configuration compliance is run for the first time, NDFC will do a show run or show run all operation on the switch and it'll start building the running config cache. Subsequently, as deployments are done from NDFC, the deployer sends out notifications for each config command executed to configuration compliance module so that it can update it's running configuration cache per switch. It is possible that someone may make an out of band change directly on the switch. Hence, every one hour, configuration compliance does a resync, meaning it throws away its running config cache for every switch and does a fresh show run, show run all to keep its running config cache up to date. Now, there's another option to trigger config compliance, and this is user driven. This is uh, not recommended at scale. So the option is to really go into the fabric and we are looking at the switches itself. We can select the switch and we under action can see a preview or deploy. And once we click on preview, we'll be able to see a resync option. This is basically another way to trigger configuration compliance. If a switch, for example, has 20 or 30 K lines of running config, doing a show run all is an expensive operation. We've seen it takes four to five minutes. And hence, if you are running this at scale, it might just take too long. Hence, this option is not recommended with a large fabric. Now, NDFC uh, will also do configuration compliance for external fabrics. 
With external fabrics, we can have any Nexus switches, we can have iOS XC, iOS XR, as well as third-party devices that can be imported into the fabric. And there's no restriction on the time of deployment. It can be classic LAN, VXLAN, fabric path, VPC, HSRP, etc. When switches are imported into an external fabric, the configuration on the switches is retained so that it is non-disruptive. Only basic policies such as switch username and management interface config, that's what is created on NDFC after a switch import and that becomes part of the intent. So basically when you're discovering the switches for the first time, there's very minimal intent that is added on NDFC. Here after any intent that is defined in NDFC becomes part of the intent and it must be present on the corresponding switch. If it is not present, again, config compliance module will report an out of sync status. Additionally, there'll be a pending config that is generated to push this intent to the switch to change the status to in sync. That's what we've seen with the other fabric uh, in the last few slides. So it's pretty much the same in external fabric, except for the first time the switch is imported. Any additional configuration that is done on the switch but not in the intent that is in NDFC will be ignored by CC as long as there's no conflict with anything on the intent. So that is how it works for the external fabric. That was it for this demo. Thank you for watching.